Welcome Kitchen Table Wizards, welcome deck brewers from all over the world. My name is Bram and I am here with my intern in a virtual way this time. Her name is Camille as she helps me with the edits a bit so I'm very grateful for her. And today's deck it's actually an adaptation of one of the early decks I've made after I, uh, I, I finished my very successful uh, competitive magic streak and I went to casual magic. But Bram, you told me that you never made day two. Um, I'm going to put Camille away now. Uh, she's not that useful now, so uh, let's just continue like this. So I'm recording this video during the spoilers of the set Ikoria Layer of the Behemoth. And when I say behemoth, I say green. And when I say green... Bram asked me to edit this video for him, but to be honest, I find this a little bit boring. So I'm gonna faster forward it so we can get to the beast faster, okay? I say tribal, and when I say tribal, I say creatures, and when I say creatures, I say stompy, and when I say stompy, I say mono green, and when I say mono green, I say lifecrafter bestiary, when I say lifecrafter bestiary, I say draw a card, and when I say draw a card, I say wildwood sage, and when I say wildwood sage, I say ravenous ballot. And when I say ravenous ballot, I say beast tribal. <laughs> So this time I went searching the card list from 2002 to 2020 to brew for you a mono green stompy mid-rangey kind of like tribal beast deck. And before I dive in the deck tech, two more things. You. Yes, you the viewer, I'm talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. You are the greatest and you know why? Because you are giving me your precious time to watch this video because we share a bond. The bond of the deck brewers of casual magic. And this bond makes us strong because the jank must continue. And it touches my heart. And who also touches my heart are these guys from Magic Card Market. They are supporting us each week to give a voucher of 10 euros to one of my subscribers. And the winner of this video is... Drumroll! Going to be communicated later at the end of the video. What did you think? You, you just come here, take the money and run. No, 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 this is not going to work like this. You stay, you enjoy the deck tech, and then later the suspense will be building and then I will tell you who won. So subscribe, put in a comment which deck you wanna see next time or if you also like to play Beast, just tell me about it and maybe next time it will be you winning a voucher. Now it's time finally to let the beast go. Oh, I was really looking forward to saying this. Let the beast go. The deck costs about 25 to 30 dollars. So if you ask me, it's a real bargain for the fun I've had with it. And of course, you can find the link in the description below. We start the list as always with our dress code, our style guide, the basic land art. And we play a lot of forest this time. 23 to be exact. So for this I picked this beautiful John Avon art. He is truly the master of sunlight if you ask me. And there's also one castle Garen brick in the deck. Because when you play the beauty and the beast you have to have a castle. Right Camille? Now, after the appetizer, the lands, we now head into the main course. Let the beast go! In the two drop slot we play Garrick's Companion and Colonial Tusker. One of these two aggressive two drops I definitely want to have in my opening hand. I also play one Leatherback Ballot, a really big guy for 3 mana. 
and I also play some creatures who like beasts. Crozen Warchief is our little beast lord in the deck that makes beasts cheaper to cast and it can also regenerate target beast for 2 mana. I also play the beauty in this beauty and the beast deck. No! It's me! She's called Wirewood Savage. And whenever a beast enters the battlefield, you may draw a card. An insanely good ability. Both cards are really old from the Onslaught block. And maybe you never heard of them. But really cool cards for this deck. I also play one Advocate of the Beast. Another elf that likes beasts. And at the beginning of my end step, you put a plus one, plus one counter on target beast you control. This guy doesn't like artifacts. He's called Manglehorn. And when he enters the battlefield, this beast destroys an artifact. And it will also slow artifact decks of your opponent down. Then I also play one Predator. Fangren Firstborn costs four mana. It's a 4-2 and whenever it attacks, you can put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature. The next beast I found in Ikoria. It's called Gamraiser. And for 4 mana you get a 4-4 with reach and trample. And whenever this creature mutates, you destroy target artifact or enchantment an opponent's control. Now mutate is a relatively new ability and this is how it works. Whenever you cast this spell for its mutate cost, and in this case it's 3 mana, you can put it over or under target non-human creature you own. So in this case we put the Gam Razor on top, it stays a 4-4 with reach and trample, but we got the abilities of the Fangren Firstborn. So when the Gam Razor attacks, also we put a plus one plus one creature on each attacking creature. Next card looks a bit like my cat. <coughs> it's called Null Height Ferox and for four mana you get a 6-6 six, six with Hexproof. Now you can't cast non-creature spells but to be honest we're not playing that much non-creature spells and if you pay two mana more you can disactivate this ability. So very good card to put the pressure on your opponent. Then there is this Timbermaw Larva. For 4 mana you get a 2-2. And these are the worst stats ever. Well maybe not ever but they are really bad. But when it attacks it gets plus 1 plus 1 for each forest you control. And we played 24 of them. So in a few games I already had this larva grow to be a 12-12 or even stronger. Ah this one is also from the Onslaught block. A really powerful card back in the day and it was even seeing a lot of tournament play. That's why for nostalgic reasons I played three of them. It's called Ravenous Ballad and when you sacrifice a beast you gain four life. Wow. So this card is really the worst nightmare for your aggro player or burn player who wants to kill you fast. The first beast for five mana is called Garrix Pack Leader. And when another creature with power 3 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. And most of our beasts have power 3 or greater. Then we have one Mr. Value. Track Tusk was played in a lot of constructed formats. It's an insanely powerful card because for 5 mana you get 5 life, you get a 5-3 beast and when it leaves the battlefield you can also create another 3-3 beast token. So a lot of value in this strange little creature. This card is not a beast. It's called Soul of Zendikar. For 6 mana you get a 6-6 six, six with reach and for 5 mana you can create a green beast token. And even when it's in your graveyard you can exile it to also create a beast token. More behemoths, more beasts. Terra Stomper is an 8-8 for 6 mana and it can't be countered and has trample. This is also a nightmare for control players who play blue and like counter spells. Well, like me. The next card is called Woodland Bellower. It's really a beast and when you play it you may search your library for a non-legendary green creature card with converted mana cost 3 or less. Most of the time here the beast is going to search for the beauty because the Wirewood Savage is giving us a lot of card draw. And if your opponent has an annoying artifact you can also search for a Manglehorn. And I do want to end this deck 
with the biggest of them all, the Titanot Rex or Mr. Godzilla Primeval Champion. <laughs> An 11-11 with trample and it has cycling and when you cycle this card away you can put a trample counter on a target beast. So these were all the creatures, now I do play a little bit of support. Let's start with some artifacts and enchantments. Life Crafters, Bestiary and Colossal Majesty give us a lot of cards in the deck. And with the Bestiary you can even use it to manipulate the top of your library by scrying. Rona's Monument is making a lot of our beasts cheaper to play. And when you cast a green creature spell, a creature you control also gains plus two plus two and trample making attacking with those big beasts even more dangerous for your opponent. I also play two cartouche of strength and one trial of strength. Now this is already a little combo and you will see when you play this deck that there's a lot of value in the deck. A lot of card draw, a lot of small tricks here and there and this is also one of the tricks and the cartouche of strength is actually one of the only ways to remove your opponent's creatures. So be careful when you use it, you don't have a lot of them in your deck. Have you ever heard of this card, Evolution Charm? I really like the flexibility of the card. In the deck, mostly on turn two, you only play a small beast. And if you don't have one, then this is nice to search for this extra land. Or later in the game, you also can return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Or if you play against decks with flying, or you have a huge beast that needs to get flying, you can also use this flexible card for it. So I really like it in the deck. To end, we have the Primal Bellow. The guy looks a little bit like me, has a little bit of the same torso, I think. No, Camille, don't you think? Yeah, sure, Bram. Sure. So... Let's talk a little bit how this deck works when you play it. It plays quite linear, so you're going to play creatures. Most of them start from turn two or turn three. You're going to tap them and you're going to attack your opponent. And you're going to see that your engine keeps running because you're also going to draw a lot of cards. And if you're not attacking, I hope you have a ravenous ballot because on defense when you have a few creatures, this is really a powerhouse. You can block with the beast and then you can sacrifice it to the ballot, then you gain the life and the attacking creature is also blocked. As I said, you can have some really explosive starts with Tuskers and Leatherback Ballots, but you can also play a more grindy game with a Crozen Champion, a Soul of Zendikar or a Wirewood Savage. And of course, Tractus is also a great card in the deck. Now, most of the time people will say ah, against control Bram you will have some problems well I will tell you I've played a lot of times with this deck against a blue black control deck or a mono blue control deck and I've won my fair share of games because Null Hide Ferox is in the deck you have Terra Stomper and you will draw a bunch of cards with Wirewood Savage you can have the Colossal Majesty in play. Every beast will give you a card when you have a Wirewood Savage. So the deck is also good against control decks. My personal opinion is that this deck is fun to play for a beginner player, but also for an advanced player because there are a lot of tricks in the deck as well. A lot of synergies between all the beasts. Uh, so fun deck to play, do check it out. Let's head into the power rankings. This is a powerful deck, so that's why a power of 8 is certainly warranted. It's not that complex to play and it's quite consistent and you rather play it offensively than defensively. I find it personally also a fun deck to play and you definitely get some bang for your buck. Against aggressive decks it does quite well, mostly because of the ravenous ballot. And it also does quite well against mid-range and control decks. It's a little more vulnerable against combo decks, but that's mostly when you have a slow start. Now let's head into the maybe board. In the beginning I was playing Roaring Prima Dox. This card lets you return a creature card you control to your owner's hand 
every time. So I was playing small beasts over and over again to draw more cards with my Wirewood Savage. I was also testing a Nessian Game Warden for 5 mana. When it enters the battlefield you look at the top X cards of your library and X is the number of forests I control and I have a lot and then I can reveal a creature card from them and put it into my hand. I also tested a Beast Tracker mostly to get a Beast with Trample, a Soul of Sandicar or a Nullhead Ferox. Of course, if you have some money on the side, you can include the questing beast. Oh my god, Bram! He has three ads to cuddle! Kami, social distancing, stay away from the questing beast. You can also include some planeswalkers in the deck that create beast tokens. I'm talking about Vivian, Monsters Advocate from Ikoria, or one of the two Garrocks, Wild Speaker or Primal Hunter. And the last card I want to talk about is for the commander players who like to play green with red. Contested Cliffs gives you one mana, but most importantly, you can tap target beast you control to have it fight with target creature an opponent controls. And this for two mana. Now because it is red, I didn't include it in this deck. So this was the deck deck. I hope you enjoyed the deck. Are we finished? No, we are not finished. I still need to reveal the winner of the card market voucher. I'm just going to put his name here. Just contact me through card market. You can find all the information below in the description and I will give you your code to buy some cards. So this was it. This was today's deck. Next week a new deck and as always keep it casual and let the beast go.